Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Deepti Kocher, and I'm an executive advisor at Esri. I have been with Esri for over 21 years in various roles and support many nonprofit and global statistical agencies. As an advisor to UNDESA, I lead the SDG programs at Esri and support UNFPA for the COVID-19 vulnerability dashboard, as well as the PDP. I also support the US Census Bureau and other global NSOs in the statistical modernization of the 2020 and beyond. This webinar is, a is the 15th in a series hosted by the UN Statistical Division as part of the run up to the UN World Data Forum. The forum aims to foster cooperation and open dialogue among governments, academia, international agencies, private sector, and civil society with a big focus on data that can be used to accelerate progress on the SDGs. Our topic for today is the COVID-19 data hubs for timely decision-making amidst the pa pandemic. Uh, before we dive in, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, please remain on mute unless you are designated speaker. We will use the chat function to communicate during the webinar. Uh, we'll have time for question and answers after at, after all the presenters are done speaking. We have received a very large number of interesting questions that we have that have helped our conversation today, and we have picked a few that the panelists will address uh, later. The panelists will also respond to some of the questions that will come live through the chat in uh, second half of the webinar. So send your questions to the host privately via the chat window throughout the session and feel free to have a discussion with other participants in the chat window. Finally, uh, let's find out who is in our virtual room. I invite you to find the chat function um, of the webinar and put in two words, the country you're com coming joining from and the sector you represent, such as uh, NSO, private sector, international organizations, or NGOs. Before we begin, I would like to highlight that the 2020 Virtual United Nations World Data Forum is taking place from 19th to 21st October 2020. The, the forum brings together very exciting speakers and topics. The program is now available on the forum website and the registration uh, is will be open in September and is free to attend for all. Stay tuned through the forum's Twitter page and the website. The pandemic has been a challenging time for decision makers since they have to respond accurately and in timely manner to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while keeping the public informed. Countries have leveraged geospatial information systems or GIS in unprecedented ways to disseminate data and information during the pandemic. The GIS data hubs have facilitated data sharing, collaboration, and interoperability, enabling countries to integrate statistical and geospatial data to make information available from different parts of the statistical and data systems for various users for timely decision-making at the local, national, and global level. Countries with the help of various partners have developed COVID-19 data hubs to make data available on the spread of the virus and its economic and social consequences. In today's webinar, we will showcase some of the data hubs developed by countries with global partners as a tool for improved dissemination and data use for diverse audience and highlight the benefits that come from collaborating among the geospatial and state statistical community. We have three outstanding panelists with us today. Uh, Macarena Perez Garcia, Executive Secretary, National Systems for uh, Territorial Information Coordination, SNIT SDI Chile. Salese Acajo, Geospatial Data Scientist, Ghana Statistical Service. Elan Al Rausan, Director of Electronic Transformation and Information Technology, Jordanian Department of Statistics. They bring tremendous experience and different perspective, and I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, from them today. So before we turn it over to them, let's see who is in our room. Uh, so I see um, 
people from uh, Mexico, Inehi have joining, UNICEF, uh, MENA Regional Office, uh, Thomas from Af Philippines, uh, and also some very um, various agencies, also WHO, USICA, U and UNDGIM. Excellent. So let's get started. To start, of, start us off, I'm pleased to introduce Elan el uh, She has worked at the Jordanian Department of Statistics uh, for over 18 years in various technical and management roles, and currently as the Director of the Electronic Transformation and Information uh, Technology Directorate, she has led several projects, including 2015 population census, surveys, and studies using the latest technology. She was a member of the Statistical Committee to develop the National Statistical Strategy 2018 to 2025, and currently a member of the Implementation Committee for the project of monitoring sustainable development goals responsible for the development of the budget, roadmap, and requirements for project implementation. Over to Alan. Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Deputy, for introducing me. Bismillah uh, Rahman Rahim. I am Ahlam Arusan, IT Director at Department of Statistics in Jordan. First, I'd like to thank United Nations Statistics Division for inviting Jordan to participate and present at this UN World Data Forum in these challenging days impacted by the COVID pandemic. Today, we will share with the audience the Jordan Department of Statistics Initiative for COVID-19 Data Hub and the benefit from the integration of the statistics and geospatial tools and how much this integration improved the dissemination quality which helped decision makers. Next, please. A coronavirus response hub is a cloud-based community engagement and government platform that organize and present data and tools to the end users. Next, please. Here, I want to show you our example in implement the data hub. In this map, I want to show you one of the examples that we developed in utilizing population of 60 years or older. It's important to mention that this particular segment of population has a special health needs and must have special care of a treatment. Because of these special requirements, we developed a dashboard specific to this segment of our population by using data from different resources such as population of census and population of economy. As shown in map, it's present more than one information in one map, like healthcare facilities for protection from disease by using population census data, impact corona with population density, in addition of extent of virus proximity to hospitals accredited for treatment of corona. Such factors are essential to ensure there is reasonable access to medicine to take care of health so ministry can deploy resources to provide assistance. So we can summarize the benefit while developing this example by the, availab the availability of ready to use template to assist statistical office quickly and easily to build their own COVID-19 dashboard. Also collaboration of statistical and geospatial community to help, to help the disseminate data in high quality of easy evaluation and analysis, in addition of the dynamic data for improved dissemination methodology. Next slide, please. Department of Statistics website used to visualize many of types of data like population indicators, various surveys, statistical report, 
analytical summarize to keep up with current activities, opening channel with new types of customers to deliver the message in the correct form. So Department of Statistics has significant amount of data in its website. It's a challenge to easily disseminate data for presentment and understanding in any format. The dashboard added value by creating an easy to use visualization and presentment format, providing the capability to see, understanding and analyze the information in much easier way. After basic training provided by UNSD, our team was able to use this technology to develop, to de to develop a path for integration between data and website as we shown next to the dashboard, which we found easy to learn and implement. So current those website now in progress to include maintain and deliver update on current situation. Utilizing embedded map and website for powerful visualization. Display data as soon as it is updated, providing value to website on the development of the virus. In addition of updates at the local and global level to present complex information in a clear and concise way, ability to analyze data. So in our website, we can see here how we can connect between the original website and the dashboard that we developed. Next, please. Using visualization here by using another example, and I want to show you another example uh, in developing a dashboard for a census of agriculture. Census data is presented through graphic maps, the first of its kind in Jordan statistics. All, re all relevant information can be seen on a single screen facilitating a clear understanding quickly and easily. As shown in this ArcGIS dashboard, it's enable users to convey information by presenting location-based analytics using interactive data visualization on a single screen and in, in, in different tiles and formats, such as pie chart, numerical, and mapping with the very important additional cap capacity of providing dynamic change capabilities. So if the user select a change in any of attribute, the dashboard dynamically change the updates of all situated indicators and displays. In addition of the, the dynamic in data, so if any change in the source data, it will reflect to the dashboard dynamically. So our objective is to continue our development of the COVID hub to provide similar capabilities. Finally, we want to mention that the outstanding support providing by Yuanas Day and especially our primary conduct, Mr. Daniel Ishiti. The training provided was effective, well developed, and the format was very, very easy for our team to follow and start to use and implement. Thank you for your support and assistance provided by this project. And thank for Data Forum for this invitation and thank all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alan. Uh, this was great. Um, and we, uh, she'll be joined with her colleague, uh, Suhad Haddad in the who's a jazz specialist during our Q&A session. So thank you. This was really amazing work that you guys have done. Uh, looking forward to hear more on the Q&A Q from you. Um, our next uh, presenter is uh, Salase Akaho. Uh, he's, a, he's a developing spatial scientist with the Ghana Statistical Services. Over the past three years, he has been engaged in census mapping and coverage analysis for the 2018 Ghana Agriculture Census in one of the team leads uh, for the GIS team for the 2020 population and housing census. 
Uh, he has also consulted for other organizations on spatial mapping design, marketing and web development needs. So, um, Lasse. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everywhere you are in the world. Okay, so uh, data for effective response does not just look at the magnitude of any occurrence, but also takes into consideration the location and how the occurrence affects its neighbors based on environmental behaviors. Next, please. Okay. So uh, in December 2019, uh, the first corona cases were reported around the world as basically in China. And then by the 12th of March, uh, Ghana recorded the first two cases. And precaution, uh, precautionary measures were put in place. Within a week, the trend of infection changed from imported as people who are arriving from other countries uh, to being recorded as infected based on contact tracing within communities. Uh, by the 30th of March, uh, a lockdown protocol was implemented in Ga Accra and Kumasi to curtail the spread of the infection. What informed this decision-making in Ghana was uh, how we gathered our data. So in Ghana, we gathered our data based on aggregated, uh, this aggregated age, sex, education, population, location, uh, geography, disabilities, migration, world districts regional and uh, mainly our sources of this information are from surveys censuses and then the administrative bodies such as the mdas and then the mmds next please okay on the geospatial part uh, we had support from uh, the ministry of health exry GPSDD, FRAM, and then UCC, which is one of our universities in Ghana, in developing the framework for our hub and then our dashboard. Now, uh, basically, the data for uh, on the number of cases and then uh, the trends of uh, the cases was from Ghana Health Service, which were the mandated institution for coming up with the data. And the hub was built in such a way that I took real-time data from them or close to real-time data from the Ghana Health Service and then we populated it and provided other information that the public will need. In addition to that, there were other sensors uh, or surveys run during the corona period to inform uh, on decision making such as the Ghana household and job tracking and then the Ghana business tracking. Our hub also was built in such a way that we looked at what data we could provide to the public, especially researchers who want to go into the data and then analyze for themselves what was happening across the country. Next. Next, please. Okay. So one of our interesting data was the uh, anonymized uh, aggregated CDR data which was uh, used to analyze the mobility across the country. As our government statistician, uh, Prof. Enimu put it, the observations on the uh, uh, dominant places of interregional mobility and they engendered the, the determination of the route to increase surveillance to ensure, to ensure reduced mob mobility. Specifically, the high mobility between Accra and Eastern regions suggested that the, suggested a need for enhanced restricted mobility between the two regions. For interesting spatial information, population distribution, and the availability of health facilities to support case management, as well as vulnerability factors, were taken into consideration uh, to look at where human beings are settling and then their pattern of behaviors. And uh, we put it in a special form so that people can be able to have a fair overview of what is going on across each part of the country. So first of all, we looked at the population distribution where we looked at the estimated population, the distribution of the aged, now and then the population density, and then we related that to how many health facilities we have in those locations. Now, all this data was aggregated at a regional, uh, a regional district level to prevent it from being very evasive. Now, the vulnerability factors that we looked at were the number of people or the number of people who share the one-room house, 
And then where you have multiple households settling in the same one room environment. So we realize that, okay, the more people you have sharing the room or a facility, the higher the tendency of the virus being spread across those people. And then with the precautionary measures being introduced at the start of the virus, which has to do with washing of hands and then the using of sanitizers, we also took into consideration how much water do people have purposely uh, put aside for washing of hands, and even if they had soap for washing of hands as, per, as, as from our survey. So these were generally data that we put in a visual form for people to assess and then analyze on their own. And behind this data, there's always the attributes of numbers that statisticians can also run across other various for themselves. Uh, and in doing all this, we came up with uh, the dashboard and then the hub that provided this information to the general public so that they can have a fair overview of what is happening in the country and then how best to organize themselves to prevent the spread of the virus on their, in their own way. Hello. Hi, Salasi, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, uh, next, please. Okay, so uh, this whole initiative was put together by Mr. Omar Seydou. Uh, he's the head of demographic statistics and SDG coordinator and demographic and social statistics for the Ghana Statistical Service. So this is just our short presentation on what we put together on our data hub and how best <clears throat> we as a statistical institution it has put ourselves forward in tackling the case of the virus or in curtailing the virus within our country. Thank you. Thank you, Salase. That's some really, really uh, interesting analysis and data access you guys have done. Uh, very cool. Um, so we are going to now move on to our last presenter for today, uh, Macarena Perez Garcia. Uh, she's a geographer and has worked in the public sector uh, in Chile at different headquarters with 11 years of experience starting in 2017. She assumed the role as executive secretary of the National St uh, Systems for Territorial Information Coordination, SNITSTI Chile. Um, also fulfilling the role as Vice President uh, of UNGGIM Americas in the period 2018 to 2021. Um, in the year 2018 to 2019, she was appointed uh, the role of Repertoire in the 8th and the ninth session of the UN Na United Nations Committee of Experts. She has been a teacher since 2011, teaching courses related to territorial analysis in the undergraduate and master degrees. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, a little, a little technical problem. <laughs> so, good morning, everyone, um, and good afternoon. Um, I, I just want to thank the opportunity to share uh, all the activities that we've been working on in this emergency since March uh, of this year. Uh, next one, please. Next slide. Okay, a little bit of context uh, in general. Uh, as they say, I'm in charge of the SDI in Chile, so we work and uh, we work with 12 uh, ministers and another minister that are not part of this council. And we have 10 working groups related with uh, data in different terms, uh, standardized data and other working groups related with uh, image and, and different information. And one of these working groups is related with uh, the emergency and information to respond to an emergency. So we support uh, different ministers uh, in, uh, in, 
in the activities related to create uh, uh, to create dashboard to create a map viewer related with some emergencies. Uh, this is the first, of course, this is the first emergency. Uh, this big <laughs> with with uh, this big activity, and we've been working together with the Minister of Health, who provides us all the data that we're showing in different dashboards. Next one, please. So uh, we start working in March when when the Minister of Health uh, uh, active this working group and we set some map viewers that are not public. Uh, for the first month, we have a uh, chosen map viewer for authorities where we can put all the information related with, uh, with data, like base data. And then we start uh, to, to improve this map viewer and decide to make it public. Of course, considering all the restrictions with the information and to protect the, the information, uh, as you know, is very delicate, uh, some of the information. So we have some public map viewers and some, uh, some closed map viewers. So uh, we create, uh, I think this is like the third or fourth version of the dashboard that we create. Uh, at this moment, we have 1,718,000 visitors, so it's a lot. And uh, for this dashboard, we work uh, with a team of journalists and designers to help us uh, to create uh, a very easy to see map viewer. Uh, as you know, uh, we're very technical sometimes, so we want to uh, publish a dashboard uh, that everyone can understand. And, and everyone can see the information that we are publishing every day. So um, in the next slide, you can see uh, some image of the dashboard. The information that we have there is related with the quarantine zones uh, and the program uh, of, the, of the government uh, named Step by Step that is uh, related with all the phases that we are uh, every community is in a different phase and every region is a different phase so it's very complicated to understand uh, so here you can have all the information about the active cases the the cases are, are confirmed um, all the information about the quarantines about the restrictions about the activities that you can do and cannot do in in some parts of the country and we have some information related with the confirmed number of cases uh, uh, two quadrants of uh, one for one square kilometers so that is that information is very important to the uh, for the local authorities, because they are having some uh, specific plans uh, in some neighborhoods, for example, uh, uh, can uh, uh, cover uh, with some extra help they part that part of the territory. So we've been very uh, having a very big support, but the S3 team here in Chile and on the US. Uh, they they always uh, uh, are very uh, uh, with a very good uh, with a, uh, action about all the doubts that we have been having. And in the next month, we are planning to create a different dashboard related with all the activities and the economy that uh, the government is increasing in some of the of the specific areas. So uh, this dashboard has uh, information that is updated every day. Uh, some of the report of the Minister of Health uh, has report uh, two, two, twice a week, for example. So we have a, a very specific team that is working every day to create this information and to put this information on the dashboard. I think that is my time. <laughs> Thank you, Macarena. Uh, uh, really uh, amazing work. Uh, I think it's showing more and more how timely data is uh, relevant and relevant data is needed at this time. 
um, and how you guys have been doing amazing work with the data hubs. You're making it available and also not only just timely, but also being keeping public inv involved and collaborating with various ministries and departments. So uh, really great work from uh, all the agencies here. Um, I I'll turn first to the questions that the participants sent uh, in advance. So we'll start with some of those. Um, so one question that has come is, what new and different data demands have you faced from the users uh, after introducing COVID-19 Data Hub and how did you cater to them? So I'm gonna first uh, uh, give it to you, uh, uh, Selassie, uh, uh, and just talk about what data needs you got uh, from the, after this hub. Selassie, if you can mute your, unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. So uh, for our side, our main requests were based on uh, people wanting the exact population numbers as at 2020, as in the projections we have now, and then uh, a breakdown of the various cases into the least most possible uh, numbers as uh, at a district level. Some requested for us to go down to a locality level, but then we told them uh, based on the way we aggregate our data, the only way we could provide it to them is at uh, a district level. So that's basically the new demands that have come. And then also, uh, we've also looked at the various visualizations and then data requests uh, based on, uh, let's say, vulnerability uh, indexes that uh, we were supposed to generate for analyzing, uh, to just give people a fair idea of what is happening and then where exactly is happening and then what they should expect to happen in the next uh, few months. Okay, uh, Alan, do you want to respond to the same question as well um, on the data needs? Alan, uh, hear or, me? Or, yes, yes, we can hear you now. Uh, yes, uh, as shown in my presentation, I give example of the group 60 years and more segment uh, so this is one of example that uh, that demand from those to prepare in this dashboard uh, and uh, in this example we apply that by collect data from three resources uh, um, census of population and census of economic and uh, the health data from Ministry of health so this is help us to give them more visualization reports that help them in this maker. Thank uh, you. Okay, yes. Uh, Macarena, do you want to um, give some examples of what additional data needs have come for, for you for Chile? Uh, yes, so we have this base data uh, in the working group of disasters that every minister uh, has already prepared like uh, the base data of the administrative uh, limits and, and the hospitals and every minister has a base data that we already have and we keep on, uh, on, uh, uh, on preparing for every disasters or every emergency that we have. So uh, at this, uh, for this uh, experience, in particular, we have to build some indicators related with uh, vulnerability or other indicators. Of, and of course, we are working with the statistics uh, 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 direction here in Chile. So we have uh, these different types and kinds of data. Of course, we've been struggling. Uh, uh, I think it's a it's a global situation <laughs> related by the data, and of course we have some issues with uh, with some of the data and the norms and the standards. Uh, but uh, uh, we are always used to to have that kind of problems. <laughs> okay, thank, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Maker. And I think we'll move to our next question. It, yes, it is really really important and relevant right now. The new data needs that are coming up. Um, one. The, uh, another question is how um, can data hubs be used for better monitor and compare changes in activity during different areas of the economy and society as well as progress towards agenda 2030 
um, uh, again, I, so last year I'll ask you to uh, talk about a little bit on how uh, you were managing change in activities across different areas of the economy and society. How this data sub hubs can be used to monitor the change. Uh, do you want to talk about Salasi about how you were doing the mobility and the change? Okay, sorry, my mic was off. Okay, so okay, no. uh, first thing is uh, our data hub. So as much as we populate the data hub, and then we have our interactive maps, and then our various uh, figures being shown, uh, we must create this form of time series within our map that people can actually visualize the trend of uh, the hotspots or the various cases as they happen and then also uh, providing them with enough information so let's say with the interactive interface once you click on it you can get what is happening at that area the magnitude of the case and then the other factors of or demographic factors that are within that area that are likely to uh, demonstrate the spread or the increase in the number of cases over there. So I think those features are something that we must embed into our da uh, data hubs and dashboards to provide timely data and information on what is happening where. Um, uh, Elam, is, with, with Suha would like to take this question on the GIS, uh, how they got, were doing more monitoring and comparing on the uh, from Jordanian side. you can reply yeah i will hello hello uh, go ahead yeah yeah we're trying here uh, to give you data and report uh, or visualization map uh, while we are in the pandemic before or after the pandemic we show a clear vision of the current situation and tell the decision maker because we we integrate many data uh, and we could link from another uh, group or ministry work to determine the most effective establishment and within certain uh, uh, characters such as the number of workers and its impact uh, on unemployment and its impact uh, on society in the event of the choosing the establishment. Uh, in the future, uh, linking them with the indicator of sustainable development may be necessary. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Makarena, do you want to take a minute to just respond to that on the monitoring, better monitoring and comparing changes? Um, okay, so at this moment, we depend, uh, the most part of the data is uh, uh, the Minister of Health that uh, generate these indicators uh, every day and every a report, a specific report about uh, twice in a week. And uh, we also have the information related with the quarantines and the restrictions for some of the regions. Uh, uh, so you can compare that information and see how is in, uh, in the evolution of this. Uh, I know that some universities and uh, some some centers of investigation are using the data that we are publishing because uh, this information uh, you can access in different uh, uh, in different kind of reports so you can use it to relate and create some indicator indicator great thank you so much um and we're going to take this one last question from from our previous thing before we move to the other audience questions um and um, what, the question is, how can these data hubs be better standardized and set up to aid similar interpretation? So uh, I'll um, give it to uh, El Alan and Suhad first uh, on this one uh, to speak a little bit better on the standardization with. Um, 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 yeah, go yes. Ahead. yes, this is tools allowed to prepare a template for specific topics, for example, COVID-19 media and reflecting the variables from data living at last for less than country or region. So that the ready template 
help in this by easy way. Great, thank you. Uh, Selassie, do you want to talk, speak about how these uh, can be better standardized? Macarena said, uh, we should have a template on the various data standards that we expect uh, from every member country. And then also, uh, we could also look at the visualizations of our maps as in what color represents what. So whenever you go to any country's uh, dashboard or data hub, you know that, okay, red means, okay, there's a place where a case is going high and then what has to be done. And then also what we could look at is also coming up with a standard on uh, vulnerability indicators as in looking at what are the general standards across the world that we could use to indicate as a, a vulnerability indicators and urge all member countries to try and gather data around that and then analyze that and use it to populate their data hub. Um, yeah, and uh, Macarena, thank you. Uh, Macarena, do you want to talk about that, uh, a, um, the work you guys have done and how you think it can all help more standardization? Okay, um, uh, I think this is like the third or fourth version of the public dashboard that we have. Um, and we realized that, uh, of course, we use a, a frame, an, an original frame that it was very simple because of the information that we can publish. So uh, in every month, we have more information in different scales. So we've been improving uh, how you see the information. I think one of the things that are a key for the success of this kind of dashboard is to work with different professional uh, from different areas uh, because we have a, a, a very a, a very big idea of um, how you show the information and everyone are going to understand that and and that is not always like you want to so uh, we have a lot of uh, different professional looking at uh, how we publish the information to make it easier. Uh, we have uh, some private uh, map viewers that are a little bit complex than this uh, because uh, it's, an, it's information that is private or on a different scale. So I think we always try to make it better and uh, simply, uh, more simplified for the people. And, and because this is, uh, uh, very successful uh, on visitors and we know every day people are looking at, at this to make decisions, not only the authorities. Yeah, no, I, I got some really good points from, uh, thank you so much. Uh, from there, I think, Selassie, you said that there is more standardization on the color scheme so people understand what that means. Uh, and Macron uh, and uh, um, said, like, you know, standard, getting templates out, which allows people to get the data out very timely manner uh, that kind of standardization is needed and Macarena from you uh, also was uh, a really good point on, um, you know, how we make this data more standardized and, and make sure that it's available in ready, readily manner. So uh, really good points from all the panelists on this. I think these are all points we can all relate to and, and understand how this is uh, helping uh, right now. Um, uh, last uh, question uh, before we move on. And, uh, and I'm sorry, I missed this earlier. Is how uh, how can data hubs be used to better detect hotspots uh, on new patterns in a timely manner? So, are we are are you guys uh, like as the pandemic is progressing, how data hub is helping for doing hotspots and pattern detection in timely manner? Uh, Salasi, I'll ask you to answer this one. Um, Okay, so looking at the case of Ghana, uh, we have gone the extra mile of running other two other surveys. That's the household and then the business tracking surveys that looks at uh, what has happened between the time of the after the lockdown and then what is happening now in various communities and then districts across the country. So that's a, a new direction we have taken in generating extra data to support decision making on how the whole uh, pandemic is affecting people and then what decisions must be made to, uh, towards those people and then how best the country can move forward from there. Okay, 
Um, Elam, do you want to just take a minute to respond to this? Uh, yes, my my colleague will respond. So yes. So hard. Yes. Yeah. So do you want to take it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, here we found that uh, modern technology is being used to support the uh, effort uh, and saving time and this gives us uh, the goal to reach the lowest uh, geographic uh, level and discover what it costs. Uh, and reduce the effort in identifying these points by uh, in the old uh, uh, method uh, going to the field and visit uh, this uh, lowest geography. Uh, but here, maybe in other side, we work with the Ministry of Health to get update information dynamically and by integrate with the GPS and map of uh, determine the location uh, of infection population, uh, maybe which uh, help ministry to go ahead in their uh, protection progress. Over. Okay, thank you. Uh, Macarena, uh, do you want to speak about the hotspot analysis? Then? Go ahead. Okay, uh, well, for us, uh, this has been a lot of work for the past month. Uh, for me and my team, uh, it was a, a really big challenge, uh, but we've been working uh, in this kind of emergency, of course, you no know, with, with this uh, characters, uh, but we've been working on this and coordinate different ministers and different data for the past, for me, the past three years. So we have the experience to create something like this, uh, but this is the first opportunity that we have to create something for the citizens, uh, something uh, very useful. And, and uh, for the future, we are working, of course, in the, the program step by step that is related with all the activities that, that you can do or cannot do, and a specific program for, uh, for economy, a task that we have for the next year. So even uh, the idea is to create uh, another task course and uh, related with uh, some uh, activities from economic that uh, the government is, uh, is improving. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think some of the uh, things I heard from the whole, uh, all of you was really, really important is you're trying to get not just reporting on COVID, but also uh, doing decision making or at least making data available on more local and granular level um, so that uh, the authorities can make decisions. Uh, but that is also bringing out trends on local geographies on the number of cases and we can make decisions on the lockdowns and other things uh, there, but then also help that to drive economy. So really great points from all the panelists here. Thank you so much. And we are going to now uh, move to the uh, uh, questions from the audience um, that have come in. Um, so I'm going to take in the first question. Uh, this is from South Africa. So it says as much as dashboards are useful for transmitting information to the public on various uh, domains. It does not cover some of the demographic nuances around the magnitude of the COVID-19 and its uh, various impacts. Uh, these technical considerations become even more magnified when displaying them at subnational level and over time. Any comments from the panelists? So I'm gonna first give it to uh, you, Selassie, to talk about this. So uh, for our statistical service, uh, we basically used uh, a graded kind of data to make sure that everywhere is covered across the country. That means we didn't look at just where uh, service data were coming from, but then based on those data, how do they relate with other districts? And then we came up with a graded data. And based on that, we reagated it into uh, uh, the district level. So as much as possible, we tried to cover everywhere in the country and then make sure that the data we we're providing uh, is substantial to it. And then looking at the various demographics that we covered, we also look at what basically uh, researchers were interested in and then what uh, basically demands were on. So that was, uh, our focus was more based on what uh, data actually informs decision making and that was where we focused on providing data for. Okay, great. Elam and Suhad, would you want to talk about this? 
on how um, dashboards are useful in transforming information to public in various domains, um, not uh, in over time. Yes, Suhat. Talking about subnational level, so how are you? Yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. While we work with dashboard, they give uh, us uh, a new vision that uh, there many things we can do it with dashboard. Uh, in the old time, we just uh, prepare map, but right uh, in, uh, by using dashboard, we have many things we, we could do it in one view uh, that gives a uh, user uh, uh, more. Uh, practice with us that this data we will find uh, many things in one dashboard uh, that's the way it's uh, perfect and we we work uh, this dashboard with hub site it's com compatible with each other uh, that's a good idea that we could uh, put dashboard in a hub site but i ask uh, a question if there's more uh, things can we do it uh, in hub site uh, like dashboard and uh, another thing we can put many iframe in uh, that in hub site but the main idea that um, we uh, we all the user uh, like uh, dashboard more than the another uh, other uh, thing Over. yeah thank thank you so hard i think very can, good point you make go ahead can i can yes. i uh, just one uh, statement about this. Uh, as much as cooperation between ministries and uh, institutes, as much the the benefit from this COVID. So if the resources of data uh, from all sides, it will be it will increase the benefit from this data hub. I think no. so. Yeah. No. Great. Great. Uh, Elam, I think. Uh, uh, you bring up a good point that there is collaboration between agencies needed to make the relevant data available. And um, not only just that, but the, in, with the dashboard, you're able to integrate these different data sources in one one place. So really valid point and great point there. Um, uh, Makarina, okay. do you want to answer to this question? Uh, yes, I just want to uh, point uh, that uh, in the beginning, in March or April, uh, at this emergency, we couldn't share, for example, the information by, uh, by a square, by the one square. Uh, at this point, we with cover and the Minister of Health is covering all the country with this information, so uh, people can, can realize and see uh, how many cases are nearby, but the authorities can make decisions for every week uh, about quarantines and, and other restrictions if they see some focal point or some, uh, some critical areas. So I think it's very important to, uh, to uh, increase the information and uh, publish the information for the community to understand yeah. this uh, how how is getting worse or better? No, great point, Macarena. I think a lower level uh, data is needed to make local locality level level decision making and resource allocation. So, um, absolutely relevant at this time um, during the pandemic. And this uh, question that has come is for uh, for Chilean uh, dashboard, but I think I I would open it to all the panelists. So the question is, um, are the data feeds automatic from operational databases um, and transactions or have they do they have to be fed every day manually? So Macron, I'll start with you first uh, on this uh, answer um, and then we'll uh, move to the other panelists. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't know if unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, we have to uh, change everything because there were, we are reporting, the Minister of Health has a daily report and epidemiology report uh, that is twice a week, so uh, my team work every day on the dashboard. Uh, so is it autom automatic? How are you pulling the data from the ministry, I guess is the question. Uh, are you getting data feeds from them and how your yes. team is pulling that? They, okay. They send me the data every day. Uh, okay. 
but uh, the data has no um, informa personal information about the cases, for example. I, I never uh, get to see that. Uh, they, I mean the information of, of the people that is uh, having the disease. I only can see the square. Okay. So I guess the point here is uh, that uh, since you're getting it from another ministry, they send the data sets to you and your team uploads it um, in, on, on a regular basis. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Corinna. Uh, so, Salase, do you want to respond to this, uh, how uh, you are putting data into this? Is it automatic or? Um... So uh, for our side, uh, various demographic data is uh, static that means we just uploaded them once and then configured them but then for the cases that the new cases and then the number of infections for those ones they are linked to <coughs> it's, automatic, and it's linked to an operational dashboard from the ghana health service so our system is more automatic we just do the checks to make sure that all the connections are working well and then uh, okay. all configurations are looking good yeah yeah, no, so I, that's a great point. So you're pulling directly the services from the Ghana Health Division into your dashboard to show uh, that data, but for your statistical data, you have uploaded it once and you don't need to frequently update. So that's a great point. Um, uh, Elam and Suha, do you want to talk about how you guys are doing data? Yes, this is from the first option and the very important option in these tools that they had the ability to connect directly with database, which means any update will be on the data will be reflect to the dashboard automatically and dynamically. Uh, we built a web service between uh, those and ministries. So even the database that out of those, we can reflect the change automatically and dynamically to the dashboard. And we are in progress to do that for all of the uh, survey and uh, data in the data hub. No, great. Uh, that's fantastic. So I, we, we are seeing that we're, you're able to collaborate with agencies and you're able to connect to your database directly uh, and automatically update it so it's yes. more, more um, relevant. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, uh, and so uh, I, I think uh, I, this this is last question. So uh, I, what resources do you need to maintain the database? Uh, Alam, your team can, uh, Suha, and you and Suhat can respond to that for the data hub. Yes, it is uh, uh, many type of uh, database. Uh, we, we use Oracle database and we need uh, from those, we have a lot of data related to the housing and economic and censuses. But yes, we have a cooperation cooperation between us and other institute under our strategy. Okay. So, so we receive from Ministry of Health, Ministry of Planning, all ministries. We receive data by uh, by agreements between us. Uh, uh, Any time we need. But in these challenging days, we have some of challenges in getting data, actually. Okay, yeah, it's sensitivity yeah. of data is really important. Um, uh, and um, so, uh, Salase, do you want to talk about what resources you guys need to maintain uh, right now? So your system seems more automatic, so I, I just am curious um, how, how you guys are doing that. So uh, apart from the normal internet data we use, uh, we need, uh, I think uh, basically we also look at the, how timely the various data sets are updated by the operational body, that's the Ghana Health Service. I think uh, they promised that they start to do it uh, at a daily basis, but then as it stands now, sometimes we get it in an interval of two days. So that's just the little hiccup that we have when it comes to the regular updates of uh, corona cases in Ghana here, but then apart from that, we have almost all data sets and uh, we capitalize basically on the extra system. So most of our data sets populated on our dashboards and then our data hub are all in file geo databases and then that's how we run our own. Thank you. Mm. Thanks. Uh, Makarena, do you want to speak to this question? on um, resources needed for data management? Maybe to say that uh, I see uh, this experience
friends uh, from my country like an opportunity to to show uh, the relevance of the, the data and the territorial information and how you can make decisions with this information so uh, i hope in in a different kind of emergency to this one we can uh, connect uh, very automatic to some data of some minister for example and and have uh, we already have some protocols uh, with with different ministers, but I think it's important to work on that to have this uh, information automatic. Yeah, thank you so much. I think that is a very, very valid point, Macarena, that you just made. Uh, you know, we there is need for disparate data. The, the kind of key takeaways: the standardization needed uh, on the hubs. Uh, there is the collaboration needed between organizations to bring different kinds of data sets together. Uh, even though there may be, you know, some hiccups around collaboration and agreements needed, but I think it's it's becoming more and more apparent, especially from the work we have seen from all these three agencies today, our presenters, uh, is that uh, those collaborations are are key to making this hubs data hubs work. Um, there is uh, definitely automation possible for data hubs to work when uh, you can pull direct services. So putting your data into services uh, makes it even more uh, useful and relevant and timely. So I, I would say that is another takeaway we, we saw and um, also continued collaboration to do analysis, right? So the analysis little more, more to the granular level. So local level decision making can happen. So. Um, that's also another key takeaway we we got from it. So thank you so much for all our presenters today and also the participants um, who have sent in all their questions. So these have, uh, uh, you know, helped us form our conversation today. So thank you so much uh, and stay tuned for the 2020 virtual UN World Data Forum registration opening in September and uh, follow the website uh, uh, and the Twitter for updates. Uh, the Twitter handle is uh, UN Data Forum. And after this session, we are going to be on the Twitter right now uh, discussing more and taking more questions uh, and putting posting out more things. Uh, uh, so it, right uh, at 10, in 10, 15 minutes uh, at 1030, we will be starting um, our, our discussions in the Twitter chat. So for Open Data Watch and uh, geocensuses. Um, so thank you so much for all for joining our webinar today. Uh, we really appreciate your participation. So with this, we'll end our session today and we'll see you in, in about 15, 20 minutes uh, on the Twitter. Thank you, Deepit. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Thank you all.